Hi everyone, welcome to another free family art project. I'm Autumn, the education coordinator here at Studio 23. So if you caught Tara's segment um, earlier, you know that we're doing um, uh, art by Sarah Clark or art inspired by Sarah Clark, who's a ceramic artist um, from this area. Uh, I'm, I have an example of a different kind of piece than what Tara showed you. So if you know anything at all about the work of Sarah Clark, you know that she's also very well known for creating these really, uh, really interesting cupcakes and people just love these. And this actually happens to be from Tara's personal collection. So if it tells you, people really love to get their hands on these. Um, what I love about her cupcake pieces is that there is this very beautiful simplicity to them. So, you know, they're, you know, she doesn't make sure everything looks exactly perfect. You can see this is not entirely symmetrical and there, there are maybe some, some marks and stuff on there that maybe, you know, you wouldn't expect. But I think it almost to me feels like Sarah is like making an attempt to uh, maybe point out that there is beauty in um, so the imperfect, right? So I think that's a really great commentary, commentary and a really great message to put out there. So anyway, um, this was the inspiration for our project today. And we were gonna be making um, a cupcake ourselves. Now we're not gonna use regular clay. This is an air dry clay that we used, but this is, this is our example that we're gonna make. All right, and let's see, get this out of the way. How I made this was I made it out of this uh, air dry clay. So even the kiddos could use it. Uh, it's, it's just from Michael's, so it's not anything super fancy. It's called DAS modeling clay or DAS. I don't know, I was not an English major, I was an art major. So um, to me with working with this, it feels like a really good hybrid of modeling clay and air dry clay. Um, which you've, if you've ever worked with air dry clay before, you know that it looks yummy. Yeah, right, I know, I kind of thought that too. I haven't eaten breakfast yet, and I was like, man, that looks good enough to eat. <laughs> um, so if you've ever worked with air dry clay, I find that it's a little difficult because it dries really quickly, and I don't always like that. But this DOS clay is fantastic. It doesn't dry out. You can use it just like regular clay in that you can just use a little water and um, cross hatch and connect pieces and they stay together. But what makes it even better than clay, if you don't have a kiln, is that it will air dry, which is great. And that's great for kids too, right? That makes it great. So this DOS modeling clay you want, um, you want, some foil, and this is just regular old foil that you get from the kitchen. And um, as far as tools go, I didn't get crazy. I just, use, I'm using like the back end of my watercolor paintbrush and a pen and some watercolor paint. And then of course, you're gonna wanna make sure you have some paper towel around. All right, so let me go ahead and move my camera so you can get a good look at what I'm doing and we'll get started. All right, so to get started, first of all, I made these in separate pieces just because it's easier. So I can actually take them apart. I made this one earlier, but not too much earlier. So it's actually still a little wet. So I have to be careful with it. Usually something like this, you wanna let it dry overnight and then it should be good to go. But so you can see, this is the bottom, this is the frosting, and I even have a little cherry on top. So when you're working with modeling clay, you know, as far as supplies go, I think, but I, I'm, I like to reuse supplies and recycle supplies, but I think as far as um, supplies go, clay is a, a little expensive, air dry clay. So um, I don't like to use too much of it. And a great way to avoid using too much of it is to make us like a skeleton, right? Um, 
which you'll see on the inside I have foil. So you're just gonna make the basic shape of what you're creating and then you're going to use clay around it. So it's gonna make it a little more stable, but it, you're also gonna use less clay, which is, to me, that's a great thing. That cupcake would fill you up for the whole day. <laughs> you are not kidding. And it had, it'd have to be gluten-free, right? <laughs> All right. Tara has a sweet tooth. It might not be big enough. <laughs> yeah, Tara does have a sweet tooth. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna get started with the bottom. And it doesn't have to be perfect. It does not have to be the perfect shape. You just wanna get it approximate, okay? So I'm gonna try and get the basic shape of the cup, the bottom of a cupcake or the cupcake paper, right? So I'll flatten this out, start squishing in my sides. Again, it does not have to be perfect. So don't look for perfection in this part of it. Not to mention the fact that, like I, like I mentioned when we were discussing Sarah's piece, um, she really did a great job of like showing the beauty and imperfection. So I think that's kind of the direction you want to go with a project like this. You want to make sure and, you know, don't, don't make it perfect. It doesn't need to be perfect. And what a great lesson to show your kids, right? All right. So now I'm going to move on to making the skeleton for the frosting part of it. And the same thing, I'm just going to start crumpling it up. And I do want it to have a little bit of a bowl shape because I want it to, I, I like a lot of frosting, so I want to make sure it looks like it has a lot of frosting on this cupcake. All right. And as long as it has the basic shape, I should be good. And I'll check it out. Let's see. Yeah, I think that's a good basic cupcake shape, right? So I'm pretty happy with that. All right, so I'll set these aside. Oh, and then I need a little tiny piece so I can make my little cherry to go on top. I don't wanna forget that. And you don't need a lot, just a little piece. To make your little cherry. All right, good to go. So now we're gonna just go in with our clay and you're just gonna grab, grab a hunk and get going with it. Let's see. All right. Now with the, with the DOS clay, you really need to keep it closed if you're not using it. So either, you know, make sure and fold it over, get the air out, or, you know, even better, stick it in a Ziploc while you're not using it, just because there is that air dry element to it. All right. And we're just going to get going. We're, we're just going to start working that clay. Um, I'm just kind of doing a pinch method with it. Uh, it's probably gonna be one of the easier methods to use and it's great for kids, you know, they're learning textile, even for little tiny kids, you know, they're, they're learning how to manipulate with their hands. Like these are all, these are all fantastic lessons for, for kids. So I'm just starting with that bottom piece, if you're wondering what I'm working on. And I'm just trying to get the basic shape because I can, I can adjust once it's on my, my little skeleton. All right, good enough, I think. Yep, good enough. So there's my, there's my bottom. All right, now I'm gonna make a piece that goes around it. And like I said, I can always make adjustments after it's made. All right. And I'm just trying to stretch this out into a one big long piece so I can just kind of wrap it around. I feel like that would be a little easier for me. Now I did connect these two pieces right here. So what I might want to do is just go in and I'll just do a little hatching and cross hatching with my finger and put some water there. Um, I don't do, seem to have to do too much with this DOS clay as far as hatching and cross hatching because it's not real clay. I mean, it's, excuse me, it's not clay that you would use normally in a ceramics class. It is real clay. It's just a different kind of clay than let's say Sarah would use. All right, I think that's good. That's good as far as shape goes. So now I'm just gonna try and thin it out a little bit uh, because like I said, I don't wanna use up too much of this clay because I know I still have a lot of frosting to do. 
Never thought about using foil. Yeah, so anytime you work with any type of air dry clay or um, like paper mache or anything like that, I prefer to use foil uh, to make us, like I said, a skeleton because it really does help you create like a base to work from, you know, which is always helpful, but then it helps you not use up so much of your clay. So um, it's kind of like a twofold um, situation where it's, it's good on, for both accounts. All right, so I'm thinning this out. It's getting there, it's definitely getting there. And you know, if you've ever worked with clay, you know that this is just one of those mediums that you really just gotta, you just gotta work. Like you work for the clay, the clay does not work for you. And that is just how it goes. All right. So then from there, what I would do is I'd probably just make some marks, hatching and cross hatching, which if you've been watching, um, been following along, you've heard me say this term a few times now, hatching and cross hatching. So hatching, those are just some little lines that I'm creating and I'm doing it with my nail, but you can do it with a tool. Um, and then cross hatching is just crossing right across those lines. Um, and it's just making a place where when, you know, we add water to the clay, then it's uh, an area where like they can connect and they will stick. Uh, this is, this is a technique that you learn in clay class. This is uh, a technique that I definitely, well, I don't know about learned in Sarah Clark's class, <laughs> ceramics classes, but I definitely perfected in her classes. All right, so got a little hatching and cross hatching. We throw a little water around the edge of this to help it stick. And then we're just gonna go ahead and start wrapping it around. And I'm just gonna kind of squeeze it in place. And we can smooth it out if we want. Again, there's beauty and imperfection, right? So maybe we don't want to, but you can always go over with a little water and smooth out the DOS clay really nicely. It looks fantastic. All right, and that was just about the size I needed, so that's great. All right, let's see here. Okay. So I am gonna just smooth it just a little, just, just where I'm connecting, right? And I'm doing those really messy hatch and cross hatches, just cause I want it to stay together even after it dries. Um, another great thing about this DOS modeling clay is that when it dries, it's very, very minimal cracking, which it, again, if you're used to using paper clay, you know, a lot of times, depending on the formula, there's a lot of cracking in it and it doesn't always look that great when it cracks. So just one more reason to check out this, this clay. All right, flatten that bottom back out. And I think, I think we're in good shape for the bottom part of the cupcake. It, it has a little bit of a bowl look, but uh, I think it's, it's in good shape. And then if you want like the lines like we have here on, on this cupcake, you know, the lines that kind of, um, I, I guess would represent like the crinkles on the cupcake wrapper, just find anything. I have, I'll just use the back of my watercolor brush and I'm simply just gonna draw some lines in there. And they're definitely not perfect, but that's okay, right? So there we go, I got the bottom of my cupcake, I got my little cupcake paper lines in there, and I think we're ready to move on. Okay, for the next part, now you could just kind of clump some uh, clay on here and make it look like the cupcakes that you know you bring into the to the bake sale or whatever at school, or you can you can kind of get fancy with it, and that's kind of what I did here. And uh, how I did it is I simply just rolled out some of the clay and I'll show you pretty easy. Let's scooch this over. All right, so you're just gonna take 
a big hunk of your clay. And I really prefer to do it on the table. Some people like to do it like this. Um, I really prefer the table because what I like to do is I like to kind of spread my fingers out while I'm doing it. And then you get a much even, a much more even, excuse me, roll to it. Um, it's a, I think, I feel like it's a better way to control the width of your coil all the way down. Um, I don't know, that's just me. So what you wanna do is you just wanna keep rolling it out, rolling your coil out until it's the desired size you want for your frosting. All right, let's see. So I'm really, I want this to be significantly smaller, so. Where can you buy this clay, Al says. Oh, Al, you can totally buy this anywhere. Um, I stopped in at Michael's this morning and bought it. Uh, that You can buy it online too in lots of different places. Um, I don't know if Joanne sells it. I'm assuming they would, but literally any kind of store like that. I know for a fact Michael's has it and they even carry it in a terracotta color if that was something that you preferred. So it's really easy to get your hands on. No problem. All right, so I think this is a good, this is probably a good size coil. Yeah, I think that's good enough. All right, and so all we're gonna do is we're just gonna start wrapping it around, right? And we're just gonna have our little starting place and I like to kind of pinch it in place and then we're just gonna wrap it around. And it's not super tight or anything, just wrap it around. And then once it starts to overlap, that's when I like to get my finger wet. And then again, do some little patching just because I want it to stay when it dries, okay? And I'm just doing it on the top because I really don't want you to see it on the sides of my frosting, okay? And you're just gonna repeat this process all the way up, spir spiral it, excuse me, all the way up until you have the top of your cupcake. Now, the really cool thing also, zero calories. Yes, <laughs> zero calories, I love it. Oh, that's funny. So um, what I love also about Das Clay is that even when it's wet, you can watercolor paint it, which means you can get some really cool effects with it. So I'm just gonna show you really quickly. So for this one, I painted it purple, and then I keep watercolor um, spray bottles in the classroom. We use them with the children's classes all the time. And um, then I just started getting a little crazy with it and started spring, you know, spraying it, and I started getting some really cool color and texture happening. So if you have you know, old spray bottles like this around and you wanna put some watercolor in it, I mean, you could do some fun things, right? So anyways, very, very easy. You'd watercolor, watercolor paint it, excuse me, like anything else. So I just went in for the bottom of mine. I went in with some blue. Good, good tips, I'm a bit ahead of you, but how do you paint it? <laughs> um, really easy. So like for the bottom, I went in just cause I wanted a little bit of contrast with the colors. So I took some blue and I just kind of ran it down those lines that I created, those cup cupcake lines, um, because I want it to be a little whimsical. So I was like, you know what, let's throw some blue in there for, for giggles, let's go ahead and do this. I'm just kind of letting it run down, right? And then after that, like I might let that dry just a little bit, but then I'm just gonna go in with some brown over top. And you could do any color. I mean, it's a cupcake, so I feel like the sky's the limit, really. And the other really cool thing about doing the watercolor on this DOS clay is that um, it kind of fills all the crevices, so you get this really cool textural look. It just really makes all those little cracks pop right out, which I think is absolutely beautiful. I think it, it just looks stunning. So that is how I would just continue to, and if you wanted, if you thought, oh, that's, that blue is really something that's really out there, you know, let the blue dry just a little bit and just go right over it with your brown and see, you're just going to get a darker brown. It's just going to make a more neutral, darker brown when you combine the brown and blue like that. 
Um, you could also just play around with color because this is just supposed to be like a fun little project, right? So play with it, have a good time. You should have fun when you're creating art. Um, other than that, you know, I just, I painted, like I said, the top purple. I've messed around with spraying some watercolor paint. I, and then I painted the cherry in a traditional way and I even gave it a little stem because I did want it to resemble Sarah's and I'll pull Sarah's back in here again so you can see it. So this is my Sarah Clark inspired um, clay or air dry clay uh, cupcake. So of course, if you make your own air dry cupcake, we would absolutely love to see it. This is easy breezy. You know it, Al. I, I come at you with the easy breezy. That's what I'd like to do. So anyway, um, if, you, if you create this, you know we wanna see it. So please share it with us, hashtag studio23 on the go, hashtag make art virtual, and we wanna see what you're working on. Otherwise, that is it for me today. I hope you all have a fantastic weekend very tasty. Yeah, I know. I want to eat this, man. All right. But anyways, I hope you guys have a fantastic weekend. And up next is Val. See you later.